Welcome back you guys and for today's News Daily video I'm going to format things a bit differently. Now we've all heard the very serious allegations surrounding Callum Hudson Odoi and I'm here to tell you guys immediately I'm not a gossip column. Once this story naturally does get updated I won't be giving you guys the latest news surrounding the serious allegations. You know for me I honestly believe that we need to Refrain from having serious opinions on the story. We need to see what happens right at the end. You know, let's not victim blame. Let's not just blindly defend uh, the victim or Callum, etc., etc. Let's just allow things to naturally progress. Let's allow the law to take over things. Of course, once we get those final conclusions, then yes, I will be giving my thoughts and opinions. But for now, you know, I don't think it's healthy or right to start speculating. And I understand that some people may believe that this is a bit of a cop-out response for me, but to keep it very real, I honestly do not care. You know, I'm not here to create some false fallacies in regards to uh, why I can justify having opinions right now. Honestly, I don't believe in that nonsense that I have to report the goods and the bad. I don't believe in that nonsense that it's my duty to give some, you know, strong opinions or to really break down the story because for me, this is a non-footballing matter and I feel like we have to just naturally allow things to progress. The truth will finally come out eventually and when it does, then we can have our final say on the proceedings. Now, from this point on, you guys, I'm going to get straight into today's new daily video. I'm here to talk about some exclusive insight that I have surrounding Dries Mertens. I'll be speaking about a young striker that has been monitored by the club. And to end things, I'll be speaking about a talented Dutch defender who has been labelled the new Van Dijk. And of course, you guys, today's video is brought to you by the One Football app. You know, I stress this all the time for a reason, but the app really is so useful. There's so many great features to use. It's a great quick way to get access to the latest news surrounding this club. And for a lot of you guys, I hope that you read the stories there first before you watch my news videos to get more insight and context in regards to the latest news. If you have haven't tried it out for yourselves, what are you waiting for? You'll find a link below in the description below. Now, moving on to this Dries Mertens report and you know, I'm here to provide you guys with some exclusive insight behind this deal because at this point in time, I'm sure that a lot of you have read the reports that have come out from Alfredo Padula suggesting that Mertens may be renewing his contract with Napoli. However, the situation is, is that Mertens does have three options at this point in time. Now, recent reports suggesting that Inter Milan was strongly interested to sign him are in fact correct and Mertens has seriously entertained the idea of playing for Inter Milan. Now, the main reason for this is that it allows Mertens to continue playing as a number nine. It gives him the opportunity to, to potentially become a leading goal scorer in Serie A and of course, naturally playing alongside his international teammate tactically fits Mertens and how he plays. Now, the reason for why Mertens is considering Inter Milan as well is that even though he has had positive talks with Frank Lampard, there has been a fundamental issue in regards to how Lampard sees himself using Dries Mertens. Lampard sees Mertens as a multifaceted striker. Certain games he may play down the left-hand side, the right-hand side, in behind, or even up front alongside Tammy Abraham or in place of him. And the reason for this is because Lampard feels like Mertens isn't necessarily the type of profile of striker that you use if you want to start your pressing phase right from the top. You know, when you press from the top, it allows the blocks to push up higher. And we need a striker that has the willingness to press close down his man to lead that press etc etc. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that Martins has completely ruled out signing for us. You know a big advocate for this deal could be down to Martins wife because Martins wife is interested in the idea of living in London and Martins himself does have some interest in one day playing in the Premier League but the main issue comes down to Lampard not necessarily seeing Martins as an out and out striker. Now this moves on to the second report in regards to striking options. Now one player that has been linked with us continuously is Moussa Dembele from Lyon. 
Now the reason for this, you guys, is that now that Leon don't have CL football, it means that they are forced to sell because when you do get UCL TV money, that really is a godsend for football clubs. That allows them to keep paying players very high wages. But once that's taken away from clubs, well, reality starts to kick in. And it means that you have to make some strong business decisions with the future of your squad. You know, we don't know exactly how much Leon would accept from Mr. Dembele. However, I feel that as time does progress, once the football season does restart in the Premier League, we are going to get some more concrete information regards to Mr. Dembele and links with his club. Now, even though we are in a good financial situation for the next transfer window, the reality is any club that's spending big amounts of money in the next window, well, it is going to be a massive PR fail. You know, with countries facing recessions, with issues surrounding NHS, not having enough protective gear to bear, for example, how can a football club justify spending 85 million, 90 million, 60 million on big name players during difficult times like this? So this entails that future deals will mostly be of an opportunistic nature. A lot of deals will involve loans, player swaps, etc, etc. But I will tell you guys, expect the big business to be done in the January window. So this moves the story on nicely to a potential young striker that we are looking at. His name is Marcus Turan from Borussia Mönchengladbach and you know he has had a very promising season at Gladbach this season. Now the news is, is that he has been a player that we've monitored ever since he was playing for Junkamp last year and of course he does fit a lot of the criteria. He has the right profile that suits the needs that Lampard wants because what Lampard really wants is a striker that can hold the ball up and bring people into play. I guess this tells us that with Dries Mertens, if he was signed, maybe he would have filled a potential backup role in the attacking positions and up front. And maybe this tells us that any moves for Jaden Sancho just aren't going to happen. As I was explaining earlier, it would be a massive PR risk for any football club to justify spending crazy amounts of money right now. And as I've been stressing a lot, do not be surprised to see Sancho leaving next season where there is going to be a Euros tournament in that following summer. It's going to give Dortmund the opportunity to make even more money off Sancho as well. And of course, lastly, for the footballing reasons, it does give Dortmund another strong opportunity of potentially trying to win the Bundesliga. In that sense, Marcus Turam is another option. At six foot four, what I really like about the player is that, you know, he's very intelligent with his movement. I think to play in our system, your timing of your runs has to be really good. You know, the intelligence of your movement too. With Turam, he's a guy that's very good at making those diagonal vertical runs in behind. He can run in front, he can drop his runs a bit deeper as well. You know, he can drift out wide too. And I think he has that physical frame. And most importantly, the technical qualities to play for a team like us. Now with Turam, even though he looks very stiff when he plays, that mostly comes down to his ability to keep his body position very upright, which allows him to survey his surroundings even better. And the reason why he looks even stiffer is due to the close control with his feet. Now he's a player that really likes to beat his man and run past him, and he's able to do this due to his ability to play with the outside of his right foot. He takes a lot of short steps when he's running with the ball, and this allows him to really time his speed really well. He can accelerate past opponents, he can run with the ball at close control, etc, etc. And even though I don't think that he's necessarily the perfect, perfect striking option for us, I feel like he's someone that could be molded and developed. You know, he's shown that glad back this season that he's made big strides tactically as a player and with his role playing up front. So I believe that he's definitely a player that is going to be monitored even more. And now you guys, to end with today's reports, I'm now going to be focusing on a young player that is potentially being seen as a new Van Dyke. His name is Xavier Biamba. He's currently owned by Barcelona and reports coming out from his homeland in Holland are suggesting that he could be looking to leave Barcelona at the end of this current season. Now, due to this pandemic, it has affected clubs with their contract renewals for players. And at this point in time, Xavier and his agent are quite frustrated with Barcelona. You know, they've been holding talks, they're trying to get some information in regards to how Barcelona are going to continue with these contract renewals. At this point in time, there's been zero progress. So reports have come out today suggesting that they are looking to leave Barcelona at the end of the season. 
And as his agent himself has stated, there has been interest from Real Madrid, where his agent admitted that, due to the historical rivalry between both clubs, that could be a bit difficult. There has been interest from Juventus, from Inter Milan, from Ajax, from AZ as well, but his agent has admitted that at this point in time, we are, on paper, the favourites to sign his client. Now, interestingly, this was a story that came out originally last year because Xavi himself actually held trials with us last year. He played with the under-18s, he did play with the under-23s as well, and the only thing that stopped us signing the player was the transfer ban last summer. Now, interestingly, his agent did provide some context in regards to just how close the player was to signing for us. He said that Frank Lampard held extreme interest in signing his client, even suggesting that if his career path goes to plan, he could be playing in the first team in the next two seasons. Now, as you guys can read from the blurb beside me, his agent really had high praise for the club, for the ambition, for the environment as well, and that was matched by Xavier as well. And as I've been stressing, due to the nature of how the club is being run right now, due to the manager we have in Frank Lampard, that actually has faith and confidence in blooding young players, you know, I really feel like this will forever give us an advantage now when it comes to signing some of the most promising young players from across Europe. Now, you might be wondering what type of profile of player is Xavier. You know, he is a defender that plays down the right hand side. He has a huge frame at 195 centimeters. I think that's about six foot four or six foot five. He plays with his head up. He has very good positioning, very good at playing out from the back as well. It seems absolutely crazy that Barcelona aren't taking his talents too seriously, but if you're asking me, it is systematic of that club and just how much they've been fumbling the use of their young players. I mean, what they're doing in La Masia right now isn't good enough. Most of the players they're signing end up failing as well. And if you're asking me, I personally believe that a club like Barcelona that has a rich history, a unique style of playing and competing, well, they are very niche. And it's no surprise that so many signings for them don't have that same impact that maybe players from their academy tend to have. It's no surprise that so many clubs are trying to entice young La Masia graduates. And what seems really interesting is that if we do sign Xavier, it seems like he would be on board of being loaned out. Because naturally, you know, if he does have a career path that could potentially give him first team game time in two years time, well, that's gonna imply that he is gonna be loaned out to respective clubs. Now, with interest from clubs like Ajax and AZ, could we sign the player who his agent and the player are big fans of already by giving him a loan move to an Eredivisie club and then one day coming back to the first team? That could potentially be the case. I feel like we're definitely going to get more reports about this deal in the not too distant future. For me, I really like the look of the player. I like his profile. I like how he plays as well. So we'll definitely have to watch his space, you guys. But on this point out, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll see you guys later for some more videos.